James and Ben back here for Odds Checker US talking about UFC 278 pay-per-view, which is going down this Saturday in Utah. And we are going to start first on the uh, light heavyweight division. And uh, in the light heavyweight division, I should say, uh, Tyson Pedro taking on Harry Hunsucker. Tyson Pedro, the biggest betting favorite on this card at minus 800. The comeback on Hunsucker, plus 550. Should mention before we get your pick here, Harry Hunsucker dropping down to 205 for this fight. He has fought primarily at heavy, heavyweight. Uh, ben, any surprises here or is it pretty obvious? This one to me is pretty obvious. I think it's worth the price here. I mean, you look at Harry Hunsucker, um, you know, maybe a decent prospect coming in, but uh, against the three UFC level uh, level opponents, I say that because he fought in the contender series, but also got knocked out. He's been knocked out twice in the UFC within two minutes each time. He just hasn't looked impressive. His chin hasn't looked good. Um, so I'm not going to back him here. Uh, even as a big underdog, you know, you might say, oh, he has a puncher's chance. Uh, I don't know. Pedro's looked pretty tough, even though he does have a few knockout losses himself. They were to better opponents than Hunsucker. Uh, I think Pedro's better wherever this fight goes. You know, you might say Hunsucker has the grappling upside because he has those submission wins. But Pedro has a few uh, good submission wins himself. I think he's honestly the better grappler with better cardio. Um, he has a lot better cardio. I think if anything, this is going to be either a really quick finish on the feet for Pedro, or it's going to be uh, once Hunsucker gets tired late in the second, uh, maybe early in the third, uh, Pedro's going to get a submission win on him. I just think he's better wherever this goes. Uh, I think this one's pretty obvious, minus 800. I'd say I actually didn't look at the line for inside the distance. I'm assuming it's like minus 200 or maybe yeah. even more. Um, but I'd say maybe take him inside the distance, just to knock the juice down. I would say if you're going to bet this fight, I'm not, by the way, and obviously I am going to take Tyson Pedro in this fight because you never know. Maybe Hunsucker, like he's got nothing to lose here. There's something mm -hmm. about that that yeah. always concerns me with the fighter that, you know, really has been counted out. I think some people are even surprised that Hunsucker's getting another fight here. Um, he's a plus 550 underdog. Maybe he looks better at 205. I don't know. I mean, you're kind of guessing at that point. I yeah. think the play here is if you're going to bet it, take Tyson Pedro either round one or round two prop. Maybe take both and just see if one hits. That's going to get the best value here, I think, even more so than inside the distance. Um, but yeah, just stay away from this fight. Don't put Tyson Pedro in a bunch of parlays. Like I always tell people this, maybe this is just my philosophy, but minus 800, you're not really getting much if you parlay that. No. So I just stay away. There's always the threat of the knockout for either guy, right? So um, I would just play the round one or round two prop if you, if you do like Pedro and you do want to bet this fight, but I would basically just stay away from um, from this fight with uh, Pedro being minus 800. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take Tyson Pedro by first round knockout. I think that's a safe uh, bet here. Um, I yeah. did just look. Oh. Sorry, one more thing. I did just no look, and Pedro to win by a knockout is minus two hundred, but Pedro to win by submission is plus three seventy. I would say, if anything, I'm gonna take submission, even though it'll probably be knockout. Just because I think if if Hunsucker, you know, maybe he does look good at two hundred five, but I still think his gas tank is an, is an issue. So I think if anything, we see Pedro uh, grind him out and then find a submission once Hunsucker gets tired. So that's if anything, that's the best value for me. And he does have a submission one over Cleo Roundtree, so that's actually not yep. a uh, bad play uh, there yeah. either. Okay, there you go. Good inside there from Ben. Okay, so this fight has been moved off the pay-per-view, but I, I think we should talk about it because to me it's very significant, very important here. Marcin Tybura, Alexander Romanov. Right now, Alexander Romanov, minus 350, the comeback on Tybura, plus 275. I think these odds are interesting. I'll explain why in a sec, but Ben, I want to get your pick here. I don't know if I have such as good a read as you. Um, this one's a stay away for me. I'm interested to see what you have to say just because – I, I do think Romanov is going to win, but I don't think he's minus 400 worthy against an opponent like Tybura. Um, you know, he, he has that good win over Chase Sherman, Vendera. He, he's looked good. Um, but I don't know. This, this is a, a high-level opponent for him. And, you know, the grappling upside is there. I, I would say, if anything, Romanov probably by submission, but that's not any crazy, you know, call-out because he has nine of his 16 wins by submission. So, I don't know. I don't have a great read on this one, to be honest. Um just because of the odds. So it's a stay away for me personally, but I'm interested to see what you have to say. I think this is a dog or pass situation. I am going to pick Romanov. I think he's the better fighter. He's not worth minus 350. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can just look at the level of opposition here. Again, you talked about a Chase Sherman, a guy who's barely holding on to his job. Jared Vandera somehow got another fight. He's another guy that's <laughs> lost three in a row. Juan Espinito, I'll give, I'll give him credit for that, but that was a fight where he won by a technical split decision. Like it wasn't an impressive performance. And then he got these two other wins. Like these are not good op opponents. Here's the thing with Ty Burra. Yeah, you look at the seven losses, but look who this guy's fighting. Uh, he's fighting the likes of Alexander Volkov, who last time I checked picked up a really big win in his last fight. Walt Harris, not in the UFC. Greg Hardy, not in the UFC, fair enough. Rothwell, Grisham, and Spivak are all in the UFC. Actually, Spivak, that win's looking really good. And then he's just, you know, he's been a mainstay for a while. I just, what concerns me is that, yeah, Tybura's losing, 
but he's losing to really good guys. And prior to this, he had a nice win streak uh, before the Volkov fight. So I could see some potential of an upset. Like if you like Ty Burrow at all in this fight, I think plus 275 isn't, isn't necessarily bad odds here. Um, but I'm with you. I would stay away from a betting perspective overall because I think it's a fight that Romanov wins, but I don't think he looks super impressive. I think Ty Burrow is a good veteran. It's definitely the toughest opponent that Romanov has fought. Um, but uh, I, I just I, I have a bad feeling about this fight that we could see an upset. So that's why, personally, I'm not going to be betting Romanov. Um, might throw a little bit on Ty Burrow just for the hell of it. But uh, yeah, these odds are way off. This should be more of like a minus... 200 minus 150 here for Romanov. I know some people might disagree with me there. I just, I, I haven't bought into the hype yet until he beats that sort of signature opponent yet. And he just hasn't done that yet. Sorry, Chase Sherman is not going to sell it for me with Alexander Romanov so far. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the pick's going to be Romanov, but I think it's a dog or pass situation from a betting perspective. Uh, let's also not forget that this is heavyweights. Uh, so yeah. a lot can happen at heavyweight and Tiberio, yeah. Knockouts, to, win by, yeah. to, Tiberio to win by a uh, knockout is plus 900. Mm. So, I mean, I know, I know Romanov's never been knocked out and you know, uh, no, that, right? that's the play. You're hundred percent right. That's the play right there. Take the plus 900. Yeah. You got to look at odds. value here. Like, honestly, like yeah. it, it might, he might not knock him out, but plus 900, like mm-hmm. Ty Burr's got knockout power. It's heavyweight. We uh, go look at yeah. the last couple of heavyweight fights that we've had in the UFC. You do see finishes. <laughs> yeah. You do see knockouts. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's why I think, and that's why this fight's now headlining the ABC portion of the prelims card. Cause they want a knockout here. So, you know, yeah. someone's getting knocked out plus 900. That's some serious value way better than plus 275. Like, Maybe Tyvera grinds out a decision, but I think more likely is he catches him somehow and yeah. gets it done. So yeah, I plus agree. 900, definitely think that's worth a stab. Maybe a small little unit on there, but uh, there we go. Mm. Okay, next fight we are going to look at here is in the bantamweight division. I love this fight. This really should be five rounds. It's unfortunate, but uh, still, we've got the legend Jose Aldo taking on Marab Devalishvili. And look at this, Jose Aldo, the underdog, plus 100 against Marab, who is minus 120. Who are you going with here? I think it's really interesting to see Aldo as the underdog. Cause I mean, I mean, Aldo, I'll, I'm not going to lie. After that loss to Piotr Jan, I was like, uh, is he declining? Is he done? All of a sudden, bang, big win over Cheeto Vera. I mean, that's an impressive win, especially now seeing what we just saw uh, against Dominic Cruz, Pedro Munoz. Uh, it's a pretty good win. And then Rob Font, a really good win. So rattle off three amazing decision wins. Um, he, he's almost like, don't call it a comeback, but I mean, he's looking good and to get dog odds. It's really hard for me because Marab, I mean, he's, he's one of the best wrestlers in the division and he's just relentless with those takedowns. Um, but no one in the UFC has ever landed more than one takedown in a fight against Aldo. So, I mean, you look at that and you say his, his takedown defense has been excellent. So I'm going to be really interested to see if Marab's uh, takedowns are going to be effective in this fight. Because if they aren't, I mean, he, he'll probably get pieced up on the feet. Like Marab, he has good striking, don't get me wrong. But I mean, Aldo's one of the best strikers in the, in the division. So, I mean, if he can stay off the mat, I think he has uh, better power, uh, especially in this division at this weight class. But th- this one's really hard to pick. I want to take Aldo just because the odds. I think it's a uh, really good value to get him as uh, plus money in this one. But if he can't defend those takedowns, it's going to be a long night for him because um, Marab is excellent cardio, is excellent pace. Uh, I don't know. I- I- I'll-, I'll do it. I'll take Aldo just because the odds. Are good Darn, I, was, I wanted to disagree with you here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really like Aldo here. I mean, you're getting Jose Aldo at plus money. And yeah. again, you just talked about it there. Look at some of those wins. Font, especially Chito Vera with what he did last weekend, knocking out Dominic Very Cruz. Good. Like that win is aged very well. Um, I like Marab a lot. Maybe one of the nicest guys that I've ever interviewed in the sport. Just a great dude. Also a training partner of uh, current Bantamweight champion, Aljamain Sterling. We got to look at the last fight that Marab had against Marlon Marais. He almost got finished in the first round in that fight, right? Like that was a fight that his chin somehow got him to that second round. And of course he won the fight. Where's Marlon Marais now? He's retired, right? So you got to kind of look at the level of opposition here a little bit, I think. Uh, the other thing with Aldo is the fact that, um, you know, in that fight with Piotr Jan that he ended up losing, it was only later in the fight he started to fade. Early on, it was pretty competitive. And if he's hanging in there with a guy like Piotr Jan, I think he beats a guy like Marab Devalishvili. You mentioned it there, though. I mean, if you're if you're going on the Aldo side, obviously you're going to be sweating to see if uh, Marab oh, yeah. gets that first takedown oh, or not. Yeah. But again, the data tells us that he is going to stop that takedown. And if he stops the takedown, Aldo's a far superior striker to Marab Devalishvili here. I cannot believe we're getting Aldo at plus money here. I think mm-hmm. that's amazing. And I might even take Aldo um, by decision here as well. It's only a three round fight. Um, I don't know if he finishes Marab. We've seen him be very durable. His only stoppage loss in the UFC was kind of that controversial loss to Ricky Simone a few years ago, if you remember. He's an extremely tough guy to take out. So I think Aldo right now, let, let me go check those odds here while we have the opportunity. Um, Jose Aldo by decision has got to be some good odds. It's got to be good odds. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Aldo by decision is, um, where are we here? Aldo by decision is plus 240. 
I think you got to take just because it's three rounds. If it's five, I'd say probably not, but it's a three round fight. Aldo's not really like he does have knockout power. He has finished guys before, but Marab, we're talking about a really durable guy in in, oh, yeah. uh, in Marab as well. So I'm going Aldo by decision, and I'm definitely picking him here. I, and I, I really like Marab a lot. I think it would be a great story if he was able to to get to that next level and get that signature win. But um, yeah, I'm going Aldo here, man. I, I feel good about it too. So we'll see. Okay, another interesting fight here: Paulo Costa taking on Luke Rockhold. And right now the odds are Paulo Costa minus two seventy five to come back on Rockhold, the former middleweight champion, plus two twenty five. Ben, who are you going with here? Uh, this one's hard because I mean, uh, anyone who looks at this one will immediately look at Rockhold's uh, time off. Obviously, he hasn't fought in over three years, and even more scary, he hasn't won in over five years now. Now, I mean, <laughs> look at it, who he was fighting. It, it's tough to really blame him. I mean, lost against Blahovic, uh, lost against Yoel Romero, who may may have been feigning a little bit, but still, that's that's you know not a bad loss on your record. And then Michael Bisping. Although Michael Bisman is only fighting with like one eye. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, hard, to, hard to give him that one. But he's been fighting the best of the best, and he's only been losing the best of the best. Um, but he's fighting a, a, an up-and-comer, Paulo Costa, who basically knocks out almost every guy he's fought, except for like one uh, or two, I think, because he got a sub win. But, I mean, this one's hard because it looks like Rockhold's chin is fading. But at the same point, it's like, can he make a comeback? I mean, it's always hard when you're betting on a fighter on a layoff. Um, for these odds, I honestly don't know if Costa is worth it, at least like throwing in a parlay. Um, I'd say if anything, take Costa by knockout maybe, because those are the better odds. But I mean, there are two very different points in their careers. Uh, Rockhold is actually in an interview. I was reading this article that said he thinks he should get a title shot if he beats Costa. Don't really agree with that one, but we'll see, I guess. Um, I don't know. He's old. He's 37 now. I think this is a tough fight for him to take against a really powerful striker. But uh, I, I do think Costa will win. I just don't know if he's worth minus one, minus three seventy. Because Rockhold's really good. So Costa by knockout, knockouts the play here. I know it's only three three rounds, but Luke's chin has been a liability for a lot of fights. Even the David yeah. Branch fight, like Branch got in the inside, and you were a little bit worried there. And you know Rockhold ended up winning that one. But there's no way I can feel confident betting Luke Rockhold. You add in the age at 37 years old. You add in the injuries. We didn't even talk about the fact that he was supposed to fight Sean Strickland at New York in New York uh, in November and had to pull out due to a back injury. So not only are you getting Luke Rockhold at 37, you're getting him with you know a lot of injuries, a lot of miles there, and a lot of knockouts there. That's not good. Now look, Paulo Costa did not look great in his last fight in fact during fight week he's just like hey we're fighting at 205 right and they just decided to change the weight class so there's some issues there but if you've been looking on social media it looks like cost is in shape for this one looks like he's going to make the 185 pound limit but and remember luke rockhold's fighting at 185 right not the last fight he had was against jan blahovic at 205 so his chin's going to be even more compromised moving back down to middleweight because you're you're losing more water there um on paper yeah. make no mistake about it luke rockhold's a better fighter that's absolutely true but yeah. I feel like you're relying on the Luke Rockhold that beat Chris Weidman to win the middleweight title. I don't know if that Rockhold exists anymore. And the second this fight got matched up, I thought Costa's going to knock him out. And I'm sticking with that. Right now, you can get Costa by knockout, I think, at minus 165. That's the play here. Again, I know it's a little risky because it's only a three-round fight, but it just takes one shot to put Rockhold out. You look at how many knockouts Costa's had in his career. I know Rockhold's going to have the height and reach advantage in this one. He's actually got a decent reach advantage, I think five inches. But I got to go Costa by knockout. Rockhold may go in there and surprise. Maybe we have like a Brian Ortega fighting Korean zombie that completely shocks <laughs> us and, and that happens. Maybe that does happen. But just with what we've seen and, and sort of the data we have, long layoff, injuries, 37 years old, apparently Bisping also, I don't know if you read that article, mentioned that Rockhold's not, you know, taking training that seriously. These are all reasons to like Paulo Costa here. So the only play I'll be making in this fight is Paulo Costa by knockout. I think it's worth it. But I will say one thing. I think if Rockhold does pull this off, he does get the title shot because he's a former champ. He's one of the biggest names in the division. And right now, there's no clear-cut contender for the winner of Alex Pahea and Israel That's Adesanya. True. I think Rockhold fits that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going Costa by knockout. Would it shock me if Luke Rockhold won? No, maybe he turns the clock and we're all wrong here. But based yeah. off the data we've seen going into this fight, you have to take Costa by knockout. That's what I'm going with. So, Paulo Costa by knockout's a pick. We'll go second round, finds his timing, and gets it done. All right, the main event, Kamara Usman, Leon Edwards. Uh, the rematch, these two fought back in uh, 2015. It was actually the last time Edwards lost a fight since then. He's been on an 11-fight unbeaten streak, and Kamara Usman has also not lost at all in the UFC. Uh, right now, as you would imagine, Kamara Usman, the big favorite here at minus 340, the comeback on Leon Edwards, plus 280. Can Leon do this, Ben? What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I think... It would be maybe worth taking a stab, but you look at this fight, and like you said, they fought a long time ago. Um, 
when both of them are kind of entering you, I think Edwards is four fights in when he fought him. Usman was on like two, I think. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, both of them fought when they're in their early stages of the career. And when they both fought, they both had those underdeveloped parts of their game, right? Usman uh, wasn't as great of a striker as he is now. I mean, his striking game has developed immensely. Uh, Edwards, the opposite. He had that wrestling problem. That's how Usman beat him uh, on the ground. And now Edwards has even landed a lot of takedowns of his own. He's kind of developed more of a wrestling game, better takedown defense. So they both improved where they lacked before. Um, But as I say that, you look at Usman's improvements on the feet against, especially in his last fight against Covington, because that was impressive to see him. uh, I, I don't remember how many strikes landed off the top of my head, but he outstruck him and it was over 100 strikes. It was very impressive. And I think when you look at that aspect of it, that Usman's even better on the feet now. I don't know where Edwards can beat him because he's not going to beat him on the ground, in my opinion. He's not uh, as good of a wrestler, obviously. And on the feet, I honestly don't know if he can beat him there either, just because of what we saw in uh, the development of Usman's striking game. So I think it's tough to say where Edwards in five rounds can outpoint him. And I don't think he can finish him because Usman's, I mean, he's incredibly tough to put away. Um I mean, he's he's one of the most durable fighters on the roster. So it, it's tough to say how Edwards can win. Sure, he could pull off the upset because he's looked, he, like you said, he's unbeaten since the first uh, fight between them. But I, I just don't see how he gets it done. Uh, so I, I'm going to have to take Usman. I, I'm probably going to say by decision, just because that seems to be how he's been winning. And Edwards has also been tough to put away. Uh, and the odds in that are pretty good. But... I don't know. I'm going to have to take Guzman in this one as much as I like Edwards and want to take the underdog. Before I give you my pick, let me just mention, I would love Leon Edwards to win here because, you know, Usman and his management, they're talking about him fighting at 205 and how he's going to beat all the, like, come on, let's stop that. (laughs) Usman's a great fighter, but let's be a little realistic here about him moving up, not one, but two weight classes and having success though. So there's, so there's that side of it. And I think Leon's got a really raw deal. He had the canceled fight against Woodley because of the, because of COVID. He had the title shot against Usman a couple summers ago. If you remember, he couldn't leave the country because of COVID as well. Um, And that ended up going to Jorge Masvidal. And then uh, he's supposed to fight Shimaev three times, and all those fights got canceled mainly because of COVID issues. So he's had a rough go. Then he fights Blah Muhammad. They have the no contest. He looked good early in that fight. That ends up as, a, as an eye poke. And then he fights Nate Diaz. And rather than people talking about him dominating Diaz the whole fight, everyone's fixated on the fact that Nate Diaz <laughs> rocked him in that fifth round as if he somehow won the fight or something. Uh, so, so I think he's had a bad rap. Now, with that said, I'm alluding to the Diaz fight there. I think Kamaru Usman does what Nate Diaz couldn't, and I think he knocks out Leon Edwards. It's a five-round fight. We've seen much improved stand-up from Kamaru Usman uh, throughout his career since working with Trevor Whitman. I remember after, obviously, when he fought Burns, he couldn't train at Killcliffe anymore. Uh, so he, um, he ended up going there, and we've just seen leaps and bounds in his striking here. We saw Leon get rocked by Nate Diaz. I think Kamaru Usman finishes what he doesn't do. And right now, you can get Kamaru Usman by knockout on some books here at plus 240. That, it's a five-round fight. I could see it happening here. I know he does go the dis- the distance a lot, but again, like I think, you know, some of the guys that he's fighting, like, you know, the first Masvidal fight, again, that was short notice. I think, you know, Usman just wanted to win the fight, but I could see a potential knockout here uh, against Leon Edwards. And you mentioned it there. How does Leon win this? That's my big thing. Like I see a lot of people saying Leon's going to, you know, shock the world. I think in some ways, and we talked about this with the Luke Rockhold fight, you're almost guessing as to what Leon, like how Leon's going to yeah. look, because here's mm-hmm. the problem. His last really good win was against Rafael Dos Anjos years ago. People want to discredit that win, but Dos Anjos was ranked at the time. He looked great. But that's the only evidence we've had, at least, you know, and, and this was a couple of years ago, that he can beat a top opponent. Like the Blah Muhammad fight, we didn't learn anything. Nate Diaz was a complete wash. I think Diaz is just a weird matchup for anyone. So I don't know. Like you're almost guessing that there's been improvements or there's been something made and there's some sort of X factor that we don't know. In, in, or, and, and you'd have to hope that happens. And you also have to hope that Usman has an off night. And those two things I think are unlikely. So... I'm going to Usman here. I'm going to take him by knockout. Maybe he wins a decision here, but at plus 240, I think those odds are worth it. We talk about value here on the show. That's very good value here for Usman, in my opinion. So I think Usman retains, and then uh, he's going to end up fighting Chimaev uh, once Chimaev beats Nate Diaz. Spoiler alert. So that's the way I'm going in this fight. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, No show for us next week because uh, we are off. Uh, There's no UFC card. Uh, Just a little FYI to you guys out there. But uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back the week after uh, UFC Paris. I think that's the next card uh, that is on the UFC docket here. So I hope everyone has a uh, great rest of your week, weekend. I hope you enjoy the fights this Saturday and we'll see you in a week or two. Sounds good, everyone. Take care. (laughs) 